Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at vectors in mechanics, so we can answer questions from exercise 8a. So we're going to see three new formulas here, well kind of new, you may have seen them uh, in the lower sixth. Um, and they describe vectors and vector lines and how a vector can move over a two-dimensional surface um, as time carries on. So if a particle starts from the initial position uh, of the vector r0, so that's kind of like a starting coordinate, and moves with constant velocity v, then its displacement from its initial position at uh, time t is vt. That's kind of like distance equals speed times time, isn't it, that component here? And uh, its position vector r is then given by this formula here, r equals r0 plus vt. So r here is any position along our vector at a certain point in time. r0 here is kind of like the starting position coordinate. v here is the velocity vector or the kind of like the direction that we're going to be traveling in. And t is the time over which that happens. So as time goes on, more of this uh, v is going to uh, come into play here, we're going to have a higher number multiplying by the velocity vector here. So the v vector here is kind of like the direction that we're traveling in, and r0 is basically where we start. So it's kind of like a starting position plus a direction vector times by time. You can kind of liken it to y equals mx plus c in a way. The plus c bit is kind of like where we start, that's r0. The m here is kind of like the direction vector that we travel in, that's kind of like v. And x here is the number that we get to choose to plug into the equation, just like t is here. Um, and that would take us further away from the starting position uh, at a, 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 in a direction that's um, evaluated by m. So that's our, that's our first equation then. Um, we'll also see two other SUVAT equations come into play that involve vectors as well. Um, and remember here, before we get started, that i here is representing a one unit distance movement in the right hand direction. If you wanted to move left, you'd just have minus i. And j here is representing a one unit movement vertically upwards. Um, if you wanted to move downwards, you would just have a minus j. OK, so a particle starts from a starting position vector of 3i plus 7j and moves with constant velocity 2i minus j. Part A here is find the position vector of the particle after 4 seconds. Part B is find the time at which the particle is due east of the original position. It's a good idea to draw a sketch and visualise this question happening. So we start at 3i plus 7j. So starting at this coordinate here, it's basically the coordinate 3, 7. Move right by 3 and up by 7. And then as time goes on, we're going to move 2 to the right and 1 down. So it's a good idea to visualise that we're going to be travelling kind of downwards and to the left. More left, more, sorry, downwards and to the right, more right than uh, downwards. OK, so once we've got our sketch here and we've visualised the problem here, find the position vector of the particle after 4 seconds. So let's bring in our formula then, r equals, so the position of any point on the line is equal to the starting point plus v times t. We know the starting point, that's 3i three, three plus 7j, and we know that the velocity vector is 2i minus j, and we have to times that by 4 because we want to find the vector after 4 seconds. So putting these all together, expanding this bracket here and here, and then adding up your i's together and adding up your j's together, you get 11 plus 3, 11i plus 3j. Now what you can always do with vectors is you can always convert them into column vectors. So for example, this 3, 7 vector here uh, represents 3i plus 7j. i will go on the top, j will go on the bottom, and then it's going to be plus 4 times by 2 minus 1, that's kind of like the movement vector, now the velocity vector here. So that's going to be 2i and minus j. And then you can kind of just add these up on the top and add these up on the bottom, making sure you times the top and the bottom of the second vector by 4. So it's 3 plus 8 is 11, and 7 minus 4 is 3. So your answer here is going to be 11i plus 3j. 
and that's what we've got in our answer here. Now I generally prefer this method here. I think the textbook prefers this i and j method here, but it is nice to be able to visualize it as column vectors as well, if you so wish to do so. Okay, part B then, find the time at which the particle is due east of the origin. Well, this here is the origin. The origin is always the center zero, zero. And it looks like we're gonna move downwards. And at some point, we're gonna be intersecting this axis here. And remember, whenever you intersect the x-axis, it's actually the y-coordinate that you set equal to zero. So what we're gonna to look to do then is we're gonna set the j-component equal to zero. Uh, we don't want the we don't want the i component equal to zero because that would mean that it wouldn't have moved left or right by anything. We want it to have moved right by something. We just don't want to have to move up or down to locate this coordinate we're looking for here. So once again, r equals r zero plus v t. Substitute in the values, so you're going to have three i plus seven j. That's your starting coordinate, and then it's plus two i minus j. That's your velocity vector times by time. What we can do now is we can expand the brackets here and group the i's together and group the j's together. So expand in your brackets and reordering things so that the i's are next to each other and the j's are next to each other and then factorizing it out. So you're going to get 3i and 2ti. So that's 3 plus 2ti. And then we're going to have 7j and minus tj. So that's going to be 7 minus t, lots of j. Now for this problem here, we're looking for when this, uh, when this particle here is going to be due east, and that's going to be the point at which we don't have to move up or down by anything, so that means the j component here is equal to zero. So we need to work out at what time will this component here equal zero. And the answer to this is seven, because when we do seven minus seven, we get zero, so therefore the j component in that case will be zero. If it was a question where it was find the time at which it was due north or maybe south of the um, point zero zero, um, then you would set the i component to be zero because from the starting point of zero zero, you don't have to move left or right by anything, just up or down by some value. So therefore it's the i component here you would set equal to zero. And in this case, it would be minus three over two. It doesn't make sense to go back in time, does it? Okay. So you can use uh, some of the other SUVAT formulas in two dimensions when the quantities are given in vectors as well. And the two SUVAT formulas that I'm particularly thinking of are up in the top right of your screen now. So it's V equals U plus AT. Remember T is the only one that never gets converted into a vector. T is always just a, a single numerical value, 5, 17, etc, etc. So um, V equals U plus AT, the V, U and the A are in bold because they can be written as vectors. The way you'd probably write it down in your notes is with these bold letters being underlined. So it's V underline equals U underline plus A underline times T. T does not need to be underlined because it's just a single numerical value. And the second one here is kind of like S equals U T plus half A T squared. But instead of using S at the start, we tend to use R at the start. That's kind of like the position for a vector. That's the letter we use there. And remember that U can be a vector, A can be a vector, T will not be a vector in either of the places where T is in that formula. So those are the two SUVAT formulas that you can use inside questions. A particle p has a velocity minus 3i plus j meters per second at time t equals zero. So kind of like the initial speed, basically, the initial velocity. Uh, the particle moves with constant acceleration 2i plus 3j meters per second squared. Find the speed of which the part find the speed of which the particle and the bearing is traveling at three seconds. So uh, since the particle is accelerating, its velocity is not constant. So we need a formula to work out the velocity at three seconds. The diagram is a bit difficult to draw here because the acceleration, it's not going to be just traveling in a straight line. It's going to be kind of turning. So we won't, we won't bother with the diagram in this case. So we need to know the final velocity at three seconds. We know the initial velocity at zero seconds. That's minus three plus, uh, minus three i plus j. And then it's going to be plus a, which is 2i plus 3j. And then it's going to be times 3 because we want to find the uh, velocity at 3 seconds. 
So in this case here, we can uh, write out write, set, write out this and substitute it into the formula. V equals U plus AT. We're first going to expand the brackets with the 3 and the A at the back. And then put the I's and the J's together. So we get this thing here. Lovely. You could have also done this with column vectors as well. You could say that V is equal to minus 3, 1 plus 3, lots of 2, 3. And you'd have got the same answer here, 3, 10 when you add together the top row and add together the bottom row. But, okay, we haven't actually finished this question, then we want to find the speed of the particle. This is, at the moment, is the velocity vector of the particle. And the speed is going to be the um, total distance that we're going to be travelling, or the total speed that we're going to be travelling at an angle uh, on the diagonal of this right angle triangle here. So it's just going to be a bit of Pythagoras calculation here. So it's 3 squared plus 10 squared, all square rooted, and we get 10.4 meters per second. So when you see speed, think, well, I've got a velocity vector. I need to do a bit of Pythagoras on that to get the total value of the speed when it's traveling at an angle. It's basically the speed is the length of the right angle triangle created by your velocity vector. We also now need to work out the bearing at which it's traveling at three seconds. We know it's traveling to the right by three and up by 10 um, from this initial points down the bottom here, but remember uh, bearings are always measured from north, so draw in that north line to help you out, and it's going to be the bearing clockwise round to that line, that's the angle that we're going to be measuring here. So it'd probably be easier to work out the angle inside the triangle first, and then do 90 minus afterwards, or you could consider the z angle here, so it's going to be theta equals tan minus 1 of opposite over adjacent, so we get 3 out of 10, Tan minus 1, 3 out of 10, is 16.7. So when you write your bearings, remember your bearing is going to have no decimals in it. So it's going to be a bearing of 0, 1, 3 uh, degrees. And we've used the Z angle rules there. If you were to work out this angle inside here, you'd have probably got about 73 degrees. Um, and then you can just do 90 minus it. So two different methods there. Okay, final question we'll have a look at then. An ice skater is skating on a large flat ice rink. At time t equals zero, the skater has a fixed point O and is skating with a velocity of 2.4i minus 0.6j meters per second. At time t equals 20, the skater is traveling with a velocity of minus 5.6i plus 3.4j. So you can see here that the velocity has changed from t equals zero to t equals 20. So therefore she must be accelerating or perhaps decelerating by a certain value. So we're going to need to work that out first. Part A is find the acceleration of the ice skater. B is find an expression for s in terms of t. So we've got our initial speed here. We've got our final speed here. We know that t from this point to this point is going to be 20. So now we're going to use v equals u plus at. Substitute the values into the formula where appropriate, and lovely, they've got it as some lovely column vectors here, my favourite. Uh, so it's going to be the final speed, which is minus 5.6 plus 3.4 as a column vector there, equals u, u is the initial speed, that's 2.4 minus 0.6 uh, on the bottom there, plus 20, that's the time, times a, we've just kind of flipped around the order of this a and t here to write it as 20a. We can then take away vectors from one ve one side of an equation to another side of an equation. So take away this vector here onto the other side. So doing minus 5.6, take away 2.4, you get minus 8. And 3.4, adding 0 0.6 onto the other side, you get 4. And that equals 20a. Divide both the top and the bottom of this vector by 20 now. And you get a, the acceleration is minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 meters per second squared. You'll probably write your final answer in how the question has been phrased to you. So it's 0 point, minus 0 0.4i plus 0 0.2j meters per second squared. Okay, part B then. Uh, finds an expression for s in terms of t. Well, in this case, we've got two options for our formula that we're going to work with here. Um, in the top left-hand case, we have no acceleration, but we can see in this question we have had some acceleration. So we're going to use this formula over on the right-hand side here. Um, that is r equals ut plus half at squared, 
Um, that is kind of like the s equals ut plus half a t squared from the SUVAT formula, just r at the front of it. So let's pull this formula in and start substituting in the values. So our initial speed is 2.4i minus 0.6j. A, it, we've just worked that out, is minus 0.4i plus 0.2j. So we've substituted those values in. And now what we're going to do is we're now going to expand the brackets and try and group together the i's components and group together the j components. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll expand all the brackets. Uh, the half is going to be expanded and the t squared will be expanded. So expanding all these brackets, we get 2.4ti minus 0.6tj minus 0.2t squared i plus 0.1t squared j. Group your i's together and factor the i, factorise the i and the j out. So you're going to get 2.4ti and minus 0.2t squared i. That will factorise to 2.4t minus 0.2t squared i. And doing exactly the same with the j component on the end there. So that's our answer to part b. Generally, this is how we would like our final answer to be written, where we've grouped the i components together and the j components together. So quite a complicated equation, this one. So as t gets bigger, um, both of these components in the i component is gonna, are going to get bigger as well. Um, so yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to form some kind of curvy shape here due to the quadratic nature of the um, time component here. Let's go on and answer some more follow-up questions from this then. So find the time at which the skater is directly northeast of O. Okay, we'll just draw a quick diagram just in the corner of your page just to visualize northeast. This is where the I component is exactly equal to the J component. And they could do any of these other quadrants as well. Maybe where the um, skater is in the position of northwest to the point O. That would be where the j component is equal to the negative of the i component. Um, down in the bottom left it would be the negative j component equals the negative i component. Bottom right would be the negative j component equals the i component. In the top right hand case that's nice and easy, it's just the j component equals the i component. So we're looking for the time at which the skater is in a position directly um, northeast of O. So we're going to set the I component of the um, movement, I component of the position vector equal to the J component of the position vector. So we're going to set the blue rectangles equal to each other here. And now we've got to rearrange and work out what the value for T is going to be. So putting everything onto one side, um, we could do a bit of factorising T out. Now we know that t is not going to be zero here because it would just still be at the origin. You wouldn't exactly call that northeast. Um, so ignore that t value then, and then we can rearrange our final equation here to t equals 10. So at 10 seconds, the skater is directly northeast from the initial position of zero, zero. Okay, and moving on to the final question then, we have a second skater that comes onto the ice rink and she has position vector r equals 1.1t minus 6 lots of j. Uh, no i component here, so it just looks like that skater is going to be skating either up or down the ice rink relative to the same point o at time t. And the question is, show that the two meters will, show, show that the two skaters will meet. So we've got two vectors here. Kind of what we're going to do here now is we're going to set each of the vectors equal to each other if we want them to intersect. It's the same as if you were to set two lines equal to each other. Uh, if you want to find the intersection of two lines, you set the equations equal to each other. And this is exactly what we're going to do with vectors. Now, because we've got two components here, we have to do it in stages. We're going to set the i components equal to each other um, well, that's just nothing on the right hand side, and also the j components equal to each other. So we're going to do this in two stages, i components first, j components second, whichever way around you want to do it, and then just make sure that the t's come out to be the same value. So um, it's important that both components match up. So comparing the i components first, um, we've got 2.4t minus 0.2t squared on the 
uh, first skater we were looking at, and there's no I component on the second skater, so we'll just call that 0. So 2.4t minus 0.2t squared equals 0. Rearrange this to work out the value for t. Now, we're going to kind of assume here that, um, that they both start from a, a point 0. Um, oh, no, wait, this one won't. This will start from a position minus 6, so it's not going to be 0. So it could potentially be 12. It's either going to be 0 or 12. Let's check out the j components now. So doing this in stages, we've done the first stage. Now we need to do the second stage for the j component. Set that equal to each other on both of the equations. Rearrange to work out a quadratic. Um, you can factorise that and you get t is equal to 5 or 12. So therefore, uh, on the first equation we had 0 or 12, on the second equation we had 5 or 12, so therefore it's obvious therefore that uh, the two skaters will bump into each other after 12 seconds, um, as it's the only time at which the i and the j components are equal to each other at the same time. So at time t equals 0, one of them will be north and south of each other, at t equals 5, the two skaters will be um, north and west of each other, sorry, um, east and west of each other, and then at 12 seconds they will be perfectly bang on each other, they will collide into each other. And that's a classic question that they ask it all the time. So your turn to have a go at this question here then, page uh, 162, the question's on the uh, screen now then, pause the video and try this question out. Right then, okay, so let's get started on this question then. A, at noon, a ferry F is 400 metres due north of an observation point O and is moving at a constant velocity of 7i plus 7j. A speedboat is 500 metres due east of O um, at noon, I assume, moving at a constant velocity of minus 3i plus 15j. Write down position vectors for F and S at time afternoon. So what I'd first like to do, actually, is I'd like to represent this with a diagram. The ferry F is 400 metres due north of the fixed point O. That's the origin. And it's travelling in a direction of 7i plus 7j, so that's going to be travelling exactly upwards in that direction there. Uh, the speedboat is 500 metres due east, so that's going to be in this position here, 500 and it's going to be moving with a constant velocity vector of minus 3i, so that's 3 to the left, and 15 up. So it's going to be travelling in this kind of direction then. So we're going to see here that potentially the paths of these two uh, ferry and speedboats here will potentially cross over. Let's get on to answering part A though. And write down the position vectors of f and s at time t seconds afternoon. So in this case here we're going to be pulling out the vector equation r equals r0 plus v times t. The r0 part, that's the uh, initial position. And we're going to represent 400 metres due north as 400j. Reason being it's j is because it's the upward component rather than the left to right component. So that's going to be j. And then it's going to be plus v. Now this is the movement, the velocity vector. So that's going to be 7i plus 7j, lots of t, and remember that our final answer with these sorts of questions here um, would like to be written where the i's, are, um, the i's are grouped together and the j's are grouped together as well, so it's going to be 7ti. Try and write your vector components at the end and the, any algebra um, in between the letters and the uh, vector components, the i or the j there, um, and then it's going to be plus 7t plus 400 lots of j. So that's the equation for the ferry. Let's do the speedboat now. It's going to be r equals, for the speedboat it's 500 due east, so that's going to be 500i, and then it's going to be plus the velocity vector, that's minus 7i, so minus 3i plus 15j, lots of t, and then we'll group together the correct components, so it's going to be 500 minus 3t, lots of the i components, and then it's going to be plus 15tj on the um, 
on the j component. Great, so those are our two answers then. We have one equation for f and one equation for the speedboat. Show that f and s will collide and find the position vector of their collision. Okay, so for part b, remember the way that we're going to show that two things collide is in two stages. We want the i we want to find the time at which the i components are equal to each other and the time at which the j components are equal to each other. So we need to make sure that these are the same. So starting with the i equation, 5t equals 500 minus 3t. Adding the 3t onto the side and dividing by 10, it looks like I'm going to get t is equal to 50. And now for the j components, just to make sure that these line up with each other as well, 7t plus 400 equals 15t. So you can kind of see where I've got these equations from. That makes one equation, that makes another equation. And so in this case here, when we subtract 7t onto the side and divide by 8, we're going to get t equals 50 as well. Lovely. So therefore, they do collide. If we came up with two different values here, say t equals 50 and t equals 60, they um, will not collide. They do collide. Now we need to find the position of their collision. So we can now just plug t equals 50 into either one of these vectors then. Let's use the ferry. So we're going to have 7 times 50. Lots of i. And then we're going to have plus... 7 times 50, uh, add 400 on the j component. And then when we simplify all the algebra here, all the calculations here, we're going to have 350i plus 750j. Lovely, excellent. So that is the position vector of their collision. If it was to ask us the question, find the distance from the origin to the collision, then you'd have to do a bit of Pythagoras there and there. So there we are. That's how we do these sorts of questions here then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 8a on page 162. And we're going to move on to make these vectors hard. So it's, good, it's a good idea to make sure that you've got the basics down uh, before we move on to the harder stuff. Thanks very much for watching.